and welcome to the FLT Museum in Chickasaw, Pennsylvania. This is the Chickasaw Historical Society. I'm Jimmy Bach, and this is History with Jimmy, along with my producer, Chandler Holmes. I'd like to thank you all for watching the previous episode. This will be episode two. And uh, as I said previously, we're going to be talking about some history, not only of the area, but of people. And today we have someone uh, who I think made history, uh, and I'll go on to explain that in a little bit. Uh, I had never heard of this particular person, to be honest with you, uh, until I talked to uh, Jake Baluda, who was a local antiques dealer here in Chicxini, and uh, he actually donated uh, items pertaining to this, and so we're thankful for that. Uh, I want to tell you about three other websites that you can go to. ShikshiniHistoricalSociety.org uh, is the one that Cheryl has set up. You can go see pictures of their kids' library. There are close to 90 uh, kids have signed up at the library and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of interest there. A lot of kids are coming back second and third time and stuff for books and stuff, so, so it's a very good thing. Also, the town of Shikshini and the land of the Five Mountains is two other Facebook pages that you can go to uh, to see some things, interesting things about, about the area. As I said, we are the greater Shikshini area. Uh, one of the things, too, uh, when you're coming by the FLT building, if you look up at the top windows, you will see a poster of this gentleman that we're going to be talking about today. And we got this idea when we visited uh, Virginia, Anna, and Sadie out in Cody, Wyoming, our grandkids, and we went to the Cody Museum, and in their second floor, they had pictures of local people uh, who accomplished things or were involved with history. So we got the idea to do that, and uh, we're probably the first museum in the area to do this. So, so I'm going to tell you the gentleman we're going to be talking about, his name, is Carl Zawatsky, and that's S-A-W-A-T-S-K-I. He was born November 4th, 1927, right here in Shikshini, and uh, he was, uh, I would say, uh, from a family that was not well-to-do. Uh, this was during the Great Depression he grew up. Uh, his family were very modest people, uh, his father was, uh, worked on WPA projects, which was uh, projects that they had to help uh, people uh, earn money uh, during the Great Depression. Uh, also, his uh, mom did piecework as a seamstress, and uh, they had three children. They were born between 1922 and 1927. Uh, it was Marcella, Chester, and Carl. <clears throat> uh, his wife, Later on, told uh, author George Wolfe, who wrote uh, most of this article that I'm about to read to you, uh, about uh, growing up here in Shikshini. And uh, he actually grew up on Parker Hill, and uh, he actually knew Frankie Titus. And uh, there's uh, some people that are still uh, around today that actually met Carl Zawatsky, saw him play at a Phillies baseball game, and uh, so uh, Byron Siegfried was quoted in the article that you'll see here uh, that the Press Enterprise did, and uh, it was a very interesting article. So I encourage you uh, to come to the museum, and you can read the complete article uh, about Carl Zawatsky. Uh, his uh, wife said that uh, he had told her a little bit before passing about his Growing up in Shikshini, uh, she said that uh, he told her that he played a lot of baseball, sandlot, wherever he could, uh, and uh, he was a very hard worker. Uh, he actually uh, helped out his family uh, when he wasn't uh, playing baseball. Uh, he was seen digging for coal in some of the abandoned coal mines, and he actually had a boat on the Susquehanna River, and he'd fill it full of coal and then take it home, and that's how they helped heat their house. So, uh, and then at one point, his parents separated, and uh, they moved to uh, Mountain View, <coughs> New Jersey. 
Carl was a very short and stocky youngster. Uh, in New Jersey, in high school, he played football, basketball, and boxing. Uh, and then he also played in the American Legion baseball in the summertime. Uh, he was known for his power of hitting home runs, and that's one thing that made him prominent uh, throughout his career. Uh, he is a left-hand batter who threw right-handed, uh, which is uh, generally, you don't see that. Uh, he drew an interest from the scouts from the Philadelphia Phillies, and he actually got a $500 bonus when he was only 16 years old in 1944. But Carl had some problems in life, and that's one of the things that I admire about him after reading his story, that he overcame a lot of things in life, uh, growing up poor, uh, working, uh, digging coal. He went on to uh, become successful, and uh, he played for five major league baseball teams, believe it or not. And, uh, but uh, one of his biggest problems was his weight. And he had problems throughout his career, and that's one of the reasons that he bounced around from different teams in the minor leagues uh, and also the major leagues. But he did overcome that and stuff. And so one of the things that he did, he became a catcher. And you could see that on the picture here that uh, we have uh, showing him with his catcher's thing uh, and so on. His biggest ass asset was his tremendous power in hitting home runs. Finally, in 1948, the Chicago Cubs called him up and was one of the first of five major league teams that he would play for. He got a nickname, Swish, because the sound of his bat launching another home run. As I said, he was a very prolific home run hitter and stuff, and so that was one of the reasons a lot of the teams liked him, because of his ability. And especially, he was left-handed, so in a lot of the ballparks, the left-handed field had a shorter uh, field there, so he was able to hit more home runs. Uh, he said that uh, the best catch that he ever made was when he met his wife, Dorothy Lusk, in Little Rock, Arkansas. She was a professional singer and said she didn't know much about baseball, but she was introduced to him by some friends, and they were married on New Year's Eve and had two children, John, who was a catcher for the St. Louis Cardinals in the 70s, and Chuck, who actually called me after hearing about the article in the Press Enterprise and somebody coming here seeing his poster in the window and uh, telling him about his dad being recognized at the FLT Museum. So he uh, said at some point he hopes to come back here to Shikshini to see where his father grew up and to see the museum. When he was with four minor league teams, uh, he won uh, home run championships uh, five different years. And uh, the Cub Scout who signed Carl up uh, called him uh, in the closest game that he could be another Babe Ruth because of his tremendous power of hitting home runs. Uh, and his son told me that Babe Ruth and his doctor actually visited Carl a month before Babe passed away. So he did know Babe Ruth. Uh, in 1951, he was drafted in the Army. Uh, he was uh, sent to uh, Tokyo, where he provided physical therapy to injured soldiers uh, in the hospital there. Later on, he was traded to the White Sox, and in the bullpen about 420 feet from home, he looked at the pitcher and couldn't see the number on the pitcher's uniform and realized that he needed glasses. He was only the second catcher in the history to wear glasses, and you can see in this picture, he's actually wearing glasses. In 57, he was traded to the Milwaukee Braves, and he helped them go to the World Series and beat the New York Yankees for the World Series. His share of the World Series was $8,924. He was then traded to the Philadelphia Phillies, and that's when local residents Tom Geis and Byron Siegfried saw him play and got to meet him personally. Playing the Braves on May 25th in Philly, he hit one of the longest home runs in the history 
of Connie Mack Stadium, hitting a fastball over the 60-foot scoreboard 405 feet from home. After that, he was traded to this last team, the St. Louis Cardinals, where he became friends with star player Stan Musial, and they both retired at the same time in 1963. Going back to Little Rock, Arkansas, he went on to become general manager of the, a minor league team, and then eventually was named president of the league. He was a modest and shy person and always a team player. He passed away November 24, 1991, at age 64. Here was someone who overcame the odds in life between family and the real world challenges he came from a small town here in Shikshini. This, to me, is what makes him special, that he worked hard, he had a dream, and he found his dream. And uh, I think that's one of the things that uh, I like about Carl, and especially about his story here. So uh, if you'd like to read the whole story, come to the FLT building and read the Press Enterprise article. Thank you again for watching this episode and hope that you'll come back for the next one. This is Jimmy Bach signing off and saying, smile, it makes you feel better.